It's a Ford Escape, but not as we know it, because this is the new Escape plug-in hybrid, or FEV for short, which gives you all the normal Escape features, but with the promise of far greater fuel efficiency. The question is, is it any good? For more videos like this, subscribe to the Car Sales channel and like this video and leave us a comment while you're at it. The Ford Escape plug-in hybrid launches at a price of $53,440 plus on-road costs, but chances are by the time you see this, it'll be $1,000 more expensive thanks to increased production costs. That puts it at a shade under 60 grand drive away. But if you add the three options packs, like this test car has, you're looking at $58,565 before on-road costs. This price is right at the top end of the medium SUV segment. But to be honest, any forthcoming plug-in hybrid models from rivals, such as the Mitsubishi Outlander, are likely to be similar money. Servicing is every 12 months or 15,000 Ks and will cost you $1,196 over the first four years, 60,000 Ks, while the warranty is for five years and unlimited kilometers. Now, there's no easy way to say this, but compared to the Escape ST line on which it's based, the FEV costs an extra $15,000. You do get a couple of extra features inside, which I'll cover later, but externally it's as per the ST line with 18 inch alloys, a body kit and lowered sport suspension. The biggest change is here under the bonnet. Whereas regular escapes use a 2.3 litre turbocharged four cylinder with 183 kilowatts, the FEV uses a 2.5 litre four cylinder and instead of a turbo, has a 14.4 kilowatt hour battery to boost power. Together, the engine and battery produce 167 kilowatts but the real headline figure is claimed combined fuel consumption of just 1.5 litres per 100 k's. So that figure comes with a very large asterisk, which I'll get to from behind the wheel. Before that, let's hop inside. The interior is, well, it's a little bit plain really. The ST steering wheel is good. This carbon strip along the dash is quite nice and there are a couple of little leather padded bits, but it's just, grey and grey and grey and there's plenty of hard plastic in here as well. It's functional and everything is reasonably easy to use, but while it seems well equipped, as mentioned earlier there are a few options on this car. Standard equipment includes keyless entry and start and an 8 inch infotainment touchscreen with digital radio, smartphone mirroring and Ford SYNC 3 operating system with voice activation. There's also widescreen digital instruments, wireless phone charging, and the FEV includes partial leather trim, a 10-way power adjustable driver's seat, and 10-speaker B&O stereo. However, the heated seats, head-up display, LED headlights, and power tailgate are part of the $1,950 ST line option pack. Front and rear parking sensors and a reversing camera are standard, but enhanced park assist, a front camera, and the clever door edge guards are an extra $1,500 as part of the parking pack. Thankfully, all the active safety toys are standard, the adaptive cruise control having a stop and go function for traffic, and the autonomous emergency braking, including both pedestrian and cyclist detection. Add this to six airbags and you have a five star safety rating. Here in the back, there's plenty of room. You might even get three smaller folk across for short trips. The seat itself is very comfy, the backrest reclines, and there's a pair of air vents and a USB-C and A port to go with the pair of USB-A ports up front. The road space is listed at a decent 556 litres, which expands to 1478 litres with the 6040 rear seats folded. Look at our 12 volt outlet, bag hook, quartet of tie down points, and remote rear seat folding, while under the floor is the space saver spare. So far, so Ford Escape. All this is true of the regular variants. To find out what makes the FEV different, we have to hit the road. Aside from the fact that when you hit the start button you met with nothing but silence, this feels pretty much like a regular escape to drive, which is mostly a good thing. But at this point I should probably explain what a plug-in hybrid is and why you might want one. Because this is a plug-in hybrid, it's got a much bigger battery and can travel much further on pure electricity than a normal hybrid. 
Ford claims an EV range of around 50 kilometers, but up to 75 k's should be pretty achievable depending on how heavy your right foot is. Now, I'll put my hand up and say I love FEVs. A lot of people think they're a silly compromise because they've got both an engine and batteries, but I look at it the other way. I look at it as zero compromise. For example, this Escape has enough EV range for me to do all my daily driving on just electricity. Plug it in each night and it won't use 1.5 litres per 100k, it'll use zero litres per 100k. And if that's all the driving you ever do, you're better off with a pure electric car. However, if I want to go on holiday to Mount Hotham or around Tasmania or to Broome, then I can, because when the electricity runs out, the petrol engine fires up and we continue. FEV detractors will say that when the electricity runs out, the batteries just become dead weight that you're carrying around. But that's not right. Because unlike a pure EV, a FEV can charge itself. It recovers energy from the brakes and the motor when you slow down. But if I press this button, I can also use the engine to charge the battery. Say I'm driving from Melbourne to Canberra, or even Melbourne to Sydney. I can leave Melbourne on EV, switch the engine on when I get to the highway, where it's at its most efficient, and charge the battery, and then hold that amount of charge until I get to the next town or city and switch back to EV again. If you regularly or even occasionally drive decent distances, it's a really good solution. Though again, don't expect to average 1.5 litres per 100k if the engine is running. It's just to do with a quirk in the way they calculate the consumption. However, while I love FEVs, I don't love this FEV. The best things about the regular Escape is that it's really good value, starts at just $36,490. It's really fast and it handles really well for an SUV. In fact, it kind of puts the sport in sport utility vehicle. Trouble is, the FEV gets rid of the power, dulls the handling by being front wheel drive only and more than 200 kilograms heavier, and it's really expensive. What's more, because it's based on the ST line, it's got the sport suspension, so you often feel very connected to the road and not always in a good way. Look, the FEV still drives pretty well and the hybrid powertrain has decent performance. But for almost 60 grand, I could buy a petrol ST line all wheel drive and fuel it for like four or five years. This car just feels like the wrong application for the technology. If the Escape FEV offered the same performance as the regular models, but with the possibility of zero emissions motoring, then it would be a much more enticing proposition. Unfortunately, it takes away from the standard car strengths and doesn't give nearly enough back in return. Simply put, just doesn't stack up. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this review, please like the video, subscribe to the Car Sales channel, and give us a comment down below.